Hi everybody, today I'm making okra stew or inmomi flo as it's called in my native Gan language. I have a lot of different types of fish in here and I'm going to take you to the market and see how I make it. Let's get started. So I'm getting some um, okra, about three pounds because I'm making a lot for a large family. I'm also getting some live blue crabs, about six of them. These ones are all female crabs here and I find that they're the best for this type of stew. But you can use any type of crab that you like. I'm also picking up one tilapia fish, as well as one Norwegian mackerel, and some fresh shrimp with some head on. If you don't like that, you can get the ones with the head off. Now this is belt fish. It's one of my favorite types of fish for this dish. It's meaty and it's firm and it just provides a lot of meat. At home I'm going to throw the crabs into a pot and you can see them here and then I'm going to fill the pot with water, sprinkle some salt and boil it until the crabs are red. Now with the fish I'm just going to cut them into four pieces each. And for tilapia, because the bones are so hard, I would recommend that you cut it towards the spine really hard at an angle with a really good sharp knife. Next, I'm going to place the fish on a parchment lined a cookie sheet and sprinkle it generously with salt and then place it in the oven and bake it for about an hour at 380 degrees. This is the dried version of giant African land snail. I bought this at Adabraka market when I was in Ghana. Um, I couldn't find the fresh one and I didn't have the time. Basically I had to really soak it overnight and wash it really well in alum and salt and then I cooked it with uh, honeycomb tripe until it was soft. Here's the belt fish. It's cleaned. I seasoned it really well with salt and pepper and then I fried it until it was nice and crisp. It freezes really well, so you don't have to use all of it. Now it's time to cut my okra. I'm just going to chop the heads off and then cut these into thin slices. The thicker you slice okra, the less slippery or less slimy it'll be. And the thinner it is, the more slippery you'll have it. So I'm just going to cut it and then just discard the edges. Okra is kind of like a sweet vegetable to me. It's it just imparts a really nice flavor to any dish. You can blend some for a thick okra soup consistency or you can have a combination of blended and chopped. It's up to you. Next I'm placing the okra in a pot of water and I'm going to boil it for about 10 minutes. Here I have about 8 Roma tomatoes. I'm going to dice 4 of them and blend the other half and then set it aside. In a large pot, I've melted some red palm oil, about one quarter cup, and then I have some sliced yellow onions, which I've added to the pot, and I'm going to saute it until it's really soft. Let me introduce you to Lonchla. When translated from Ga to English, it's stinky fish. Now this was the preferred seasoning method of my ancestors, and it's basically a very highly salted and fermented fish, and it stinks to high heaven but it imparts a really nice savory flavor to any dish that it's added to. And it's mostly used for stews, not really soups so much, but mostly stews, and you can only use so much. Now, it stinks so badly <laughs> that I have to store it in multiple bags in the freezer so that my fridge doesn't smell every time that I open it. So you can see here what it looks like. And I, when I bought it from Ghana, I actually had it wrapped just like this with a lot of tape. Now, like I said, you can only use so little because if you don't, chale, about che police, you can have back and we go your shami. So you can only use a little bit and it imparts a nice savory flavor to any dish. Like I said, it's absolutely delicious. Now I'm gonna add those diced tomatoes that I had cut earlier. And then I'm also gonna add about one quarter cup of tomato paste to this. I'm gonna stir it really well until all the ingredients are well distributed. And then I'm going to add the blended tomatoes that I had we had prepped earlier and it's going right in here. Here's where you add all your spices. I'm adding red African pepper powder to this because I don't have any um, fresh pepper in my house when I was making this, um, but you can add your salt, you can add whatever kind of seasonings you like. Allow the sauce to cook down until the water is evaporated, and then you can add your fish. You don't have to add all the fish to this, you can freeze some for later, um, but just add as much as you want. And then I'm also putting in my snail and my tripe here. I'm using a strainer to add the cooked okra to my stew now, and then I'll add the clean and washed shrimp to it and just bury the shrimp in the sauce so it'll cook that way. To clean the crab, you first need to remove the apron from the abdomen and then drain the water into a bowl 
and then I'm gonna remove the tips of the claws. I was always told that this is what I do to clean the crab, um, so if you wanna keep them on, it's up to you. And then I'm gonna remove the feelers uh, that's just below the eyes on the crab, so all of that has to be removed. And cut it in half. Very tasty crab. So now I'm gonna bury the crab in my stew so that it absorbs all the flavors. I like to eat this by itself sometimes when I'm on a diet, but it's traditionally eaten with bangkung, which are savory um, corn and cassava dough balls that have been cooked and it's enjoyed together and it's absolutely delicious. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.